अज्ञानतिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन श्लाक चक्षुन मिलत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वाकतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो महाबदन्नाय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नमने गौरतिशे गुरवे गौरचंद्रा राधिकाय तदालय कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय इन अवर स्क्रिप्चर्स आई थिंक दैट समन शुड कम नियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस अदरवाइज टू होम आई विल स्पीक इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हियर यू शुड कम इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी ये सुन दी that in this world all kinds of living beings who have sense intelligence they want happiness peace and calm of mind they never want suffer suffering sorrows always they want to be happy this is the nature this is the nature of all the living beings in this world we can see two kinds of vastu vastu two things two kinds of objects objects things substances matter matter like those who have senses those who has some kinds of wish they feel happiness and sufferings they are chetan jeev they are conscious 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 living entities mm. conscious living entities living entities and fact there is no wish no feelings they are called on conscious matter like what is this your death or inner only on conscious matter it has no life but we human beings animals birds creatures trees grasses all have life they have sense they can feel sorrow suffering melody or anything good hmm? so where there is life where it is some feelings where there is some wish hmm? these are called souls or conscious living being hmm? the trees the creepers the fishes the animals 
and human being and and gods goddesses <coughs> demi gods all has within their body soul same type of soul you know but their past activities <coughs> their senses are of some different or is degrees different degrees fishes are also soul we are also soul trees have also soul every verb where i will see wishes and feelings they are all souls but there is some difference in their intelligence and feelings we think that only you human be- beings are only soul we think that all have been made only to eat and to taste that is why we don't treat them like our human so our object in this world to be happy and to make also happy to others we think that by collecting wealth by improving our medical science economical science and other signs transportations communications. communications and now it is what computer, computer. computer. by developing all this we can be happy we want a very strong healthy body always in young age in youth we don't want to be old we don't want to die we don't want any problem suffering and sorrows but it is true that whether we want or not problems old age death are bound to come and will they will keep their feet on our heads whether we want to suffer or not we want old age or not we want to die or not they will come and one day we will die taking not anything from this world not a farthing not not our even a hair we will give up this body also here which we think that i am this body even you will have to give up so if a man has a very strong body so beautiful face and all body having worldly all kinds of qualities young is very intelligent very expert in making money then we think that oh by this we can be very happy but really we cannot be happy happy by these things we cannot happy if you are so much wealthy then some miseries some problems are bound to come and to forget all these sufferings we can take so heavy wine and other things tobacco smoking fine to forget our sufferings so that we can sleep in night sometimes problems are so 
dangerous. We cannot sob, so we cannot sleep well. So you will have to take some pills for that. And if the pills are in in, in quantity, heavy quantity, we can die also. We want to forget our senses so that we can forget all miseries. That is why we take. And then we think that, oh, you are very happy. By taking drugs, hmm, what? Sense goes away and we think that, oh, we are monarch of all, we are happy. But really not. So, we want to tell a pastam Nishingadev and Prahlad Maharaj. And there was a king, very strong, very intelligent. And he used to know very first class of duplicacy, duplicity and politics. And he has a very good, very strong army. His commanders were like so strong. He was so wealthy. He has a bone that will not die by anyone. Anyone cannot kill him. Anyone, any man, human, in a human shape or demigods, any snake, animal, any fish, any life in this creation can, should not kill me. I should not die in day, in night, in any month. He has that type of a boon that anyone cannot in this world cannot kill him. But what became? What became? What was the result? He was not happy. In a moment he was killed. And how? We are going to narrate this thing. Hmm? Oh, you can <coughs> speak something about Prahlad Maharaj and this thing. Very clearly, having very. You can give. No, no, no. His voice is very good. Om Gyan Tumiran Dasa. Oh, my heart. I so Maharaj was just <coughs> mentioning that many, many um, millenniums ago, many years ago, there existed a personality called Hiranyakashipu. So Hiranyakashipu, he was what we call a demon, it means that his mentality in life was to eat, drink, be merry, and to dominate in every possible way. So to achieve this, um, Hiranyakashipu, he performed great austerities. He went to a place called Mandari Hill. And he performed austerities, namely, he stood on his toes with his arms outstretched like this for a very, very long time. It's explained that he did so for a period of 60,000 years. Because during that time, um, people, they had lifespans that um, went up to 100,000 years. So, he performed this great austerity, so much so that an anthill had covered his body, and his body was um, completely eaten up by ants. There was no body, no flesh, and all that was left was just bones and his life here was sustained within the bones. So, performing this austerity, he was performing um, for whom? He was trying to appease the secondary creator of this material world, his name, Lord Brahma. In the Vedic scriptures, it stated that Krishna or Vishnu 
that he is the supreme personality of Godhead and he is the original creator. But to manifest the different forms, as Maharaj was explaining, you have inner, inner matter and you also have the living entities who have different species of life. There are 8,400,000 species of life. You have the aquatics, the um, trees, the animals, the human species, and even higher planet, planetary systems, you have the devas, the demigods. So, the topmost demigod, his name is Lord Brahma, and he's known as the secondary creator of this material cosmic manifestation. And he creates the different forms that make up the different species of life. So, Lord Brahma um, was approached by this Hiranyakashipu who was performing his austerities to try and please Lord Brahma. Because he thought that because Lord Brahma is creating all the variegatedness within this material world, then he can give me my boon. And what was his boon? He wanted immortality. So he performed this austerity, as I mentioned, for 60,000 years. And finally, Lord Brahma, seeing the situation, how he was um, actually creating such a disturbance. disturbance and ruining his body, then finally he came and he asked him, what boon would you like? What do you want? And he said, I would like a boon from you. And Lord Brahma, he replied, well, what boon do you want? And he said that he wanted to be immortal. And Lord Brahma explained to him that I myself, I am created by the Supreme Lord. Though I am um, apparently the creator of this material world, but actually, I just take those elements which already exist and I'm able to manipulate them in a particular way because I'm empowered by, in this way by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But even though I have such a long lifespan, even I have to die. So how can I give you something that I myself don't have? I cannot give you mortality. But Hiranyakashipu, he was very um, devious in his mentality because one who wants to enjoy matter, it's not that um, one is necessarily intelligent but one is devious in how, or very crafty, in how one will try and get that sense of enjoyment by whatever means possible. So he said, okay, if you can't give me mortality, so give me the boon that um, I will not be able to be killed by any um, human being or any animal. Then Lord Brahma, he said, granted, give me the boon that I cannot be killed in the day or in the night. Lord Brahma, he said, granted. Give me the boon that I will not be killed on the land or the sea or the sky. He said, granted. And in this way, he asked for so many different boons, thinking that he would be able to be immortal. So, after getting these boons, then thinking that he had gained immortality, then he left the Mandara hill, Actually, I did not explain also that when Lord Brahma he came to him, then he took some um, water from his pot and he sprinkled it on the head of Hiranyakashipu, who at this time was only subsisting on, he, he was just bones, and he rejuvenated his body. So, going back home, um, then he went, and during the time that he was performing the austerities, his wife... Um, had fled home. His wife was pregnant and she had within her womb a son whose name was Prahlad. So the, demigod the demigods had been so much disturbed by Hiranyakashipu, this demon, that when Hiranyakashipu had gone to perform his austerities, then they went to kill the baby that was within the womb of his wife, thinking that, oh, because the father is a demon, so the son also, he'll have the same qualities of the father. So the wife had gone to the hermitage of a sage called Narada Muni. And when the... Demigods so took Kayadu and they wanted to kill the boy, but he was in home. Mm. Said they took it to heaven that their fancy will give the boy, but then we will kill. Yeah. So they were taking me her to... So they were going to take her to the heavenly planets. Yeah. Yeah. But in the midway, Narada Muni, 
Oh, so then Narada Muni, he came and he told the demigods that actually the baby that's within the womb of this lady Kayadu is actually a very, um, he's a great saintly personality, that he's not a demon. So you should not, um, obviously you should not um, try to harm this and baby in any way. You cannot kill. And by your best efforts, because this baby is protected by the Lord, you will not be able to kill the baby anyway. So, the demigods, they um, left the wife of Hiranyakashipu, and at that time, Kayadu, she went and she took shelter of Narada Muni. She went and she stayed at the hermitage of Narada Muni. And she was so frightful that still the demigods might create some problem, that she um, stayed at his hermitage for the time that her husband was performing these austerities, which was a time of 60,000 years. So during this period, Narada Muni was giving so much instructions from the sp spiritual sc um, scriptures, called the Vedic scriptures, um, to Kayadu. And Prahlad Maharaj, Prahlad, who was within the womb, he was hearing all these instructions and um, getting so much knowledge and realization. So finally, when Hirani Kashipu, he came home, and his, in due course, his son was born, and as he grew up, then he was put into school. But he was put into a school, just as we see in um, modern civilization, there's millions and billions of dollars which are being spent for education. But what is the education? The education is based on how one can prosper materially, how one can become very adept at different materialistic sciences, how one can become very adept in mani manipulating the material energy, and ultimately how one can enjoy the body and extensions of the body, meaning with the family society, um, and perpetuate the bodily conception of life. But if we analyze the situation, we see how much money is being spent on material education, and see how much money is being spent by these institutions on educating the children that you're not this body, that you're a spiritual living entity, and that ultimately your happiness comes from self-realization, we see that it's practically next to nothing. So Hiranya Kashipu, he was of this mentality. This type of mentality is, it, even though it may be on the surface, it may, be, it may appear um, very nice, but actually it's none different from the mentality of this Hiranya Kashipu, who was demoniac. So, Hirani Kashipu sent him to school, and he had his teachers who were called Sanda and Amaka. So after studying for some time, um, Hirani Kashipu, he called his son. He wanted his boy to come. And then the mother of Hirani Kashipu dressed him up very nicely, and then she took Prahlad to the father, and Hirani Kashipu had Prahlad sit on his lap, and he was stroking his hair very lovingly, and then he asked him, Oh son, what, is, what have you learnt from um, your teachers? And then Prahlad Maharaj, he said, um, Oh best of the demons. He addressed his father um, as, Oh best of the demons, in a very respectful way. He ran to he was happy to be called a demon, because that was his position, to, um, to defy Vishnu. So he said, O oh king, O oh best of the demons, the best thing that I've learned today, uh, up to now, is that one who is trying to prosper in material life and be happy in a materialist conception of life can never be happy. But rather, one should um, give up such conception and take to spiritual life. Upon hearing this, he ran in Kashipu, he became very angry. Uh, and he said, what is this that my son is learning? And he took him off his lap, and then he went, he went to the teachers, Sandra Maka, and he said, what is this that this boy is learning? And Sandra Maka, they said, well, he did not learn this from us. So he said, okay, you take him and you teach him properly. So then, Pallad was there, he was learning <coughs> some more, and after some time, he ran to Kashipu, he called for his son again. And then the mother dressed him up very nicely and brought Prahlad to the father. And the father now, he sat him on the lap again. And he said, now Prahlad, 
Now, what, what have you learned from your teachers now? Have you learned properly? And then Prahlad, he said, What I've learned is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasya, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam, Iti, Pumsapita, Vishnu, Bhakti, Chen, Navalakshana, Kriyata, Bhagavatada, Tanmanye, Ditam, Uttamam. That, O oh, Father, I have learned that one who is engaged in Shravanam, in hearing about the pastimes of the Lord, hearing spiritual topics, and after hearing such topics from qualified devotees, from qualified spiritualists, who have realized the absolute truth, then one can discuss such activities amongst my friends. I realize that this is very nice, not just learning the materialistic things which my teachers, Sandra and Amaka, are teaching me. Because what, what was Sandra and Amaka teaching? They were teaching him economics, they were teaching him diplomacy, because his father was a king, Hiram Kashipu was a great king. So they were teaching him how to follow in the footsteps of his father and be so diplomatic, so political from a very um, young age. Just as we see in society today, we see the leaders of society and everybody's saying that they're doing things not just for the best of their country or people, but for the best of um, humanity, for the best of the world. But actually, it's all the, um, politics and diplomacy. Everybody's looking after their best interests, but they're very expert at presenting it in such a way that um, you know, the general public, they feel that they're getting the best deal. And they try to, their whole system is to control the general public. And if you cannot control them with sweet words, then after you give them a nice big position in society. We see this happens with so many people who have um, revolutionary ideas towards a particular government. Then the government, they first try to control them in a particular way, with sweet words, then after they try to buy them into the government system, and they give them a, a big position. And then if they can't do that, then they just spoil the name, or they kill them. They get rid of them. So, Pallad Maharaj was being taught this in school, from a very early age. Practically speaking, he was only about five years old. But he said, this is not what I've learned. What I really have learned is to hear the glories of the Lord. That these pastimes, they take away all inauspiciousness, all inauspiciousness from the heart. They remove duplicity. They remove diplomacy. And rather they imbue one with a feeling of love for the Supreme and love for all parts and parcels of the Supreme. Because if one has love for God, then automatically one will have love for all parts and parcels. And I've learned to chant these glories. By chanting these glories, then I'll get deeper um, realization and I'll be able to remember them. Shravanam, Ketnam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam. And that rather than serving um, my family, my society, um, I've learned that the best thing is to serve the lotus feet of the Lord. To engage my time in worshipping the Lord, dressing the Lord, uh, and doing, performing different activities for the Lord. Achanam, Bandanam, offering prayers to the Lord. Dasyam, Surrendering myself as a servant, Sakyam, understanding that actually the Lord, He is my real friend. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita, one of our Vedic scriptures. It states, Bhoktaram Yagata Pasham, Sava Loka Maheshwaram, Suridam Sava Bhutanam, Gyapa Mam Shantam Richatim. That one who understands that the Lord, He is ultimately the enjoyer, Bhoktaram Yagata, the enjoyer of all sacrifices, but the best friend of all living entities that such a person can have peace. So I said, I've learned that actually, the Lord, He's my friend. And that by having a friendship with Him, I will never be cheated. In our relationships in this material world, it's all based on give and take. And there's always that element of cheating to some degree. But when one has a relationship with the Lord, or those who are um, very close to the Lord, who are self-realized, free from envy, malice, then only with such relationships, one will not be cheated. And ultimately, I've learned Atmani Vedanam, to surrender everything to the Lord. Because ultimately, nothing belongs to me. We come with nothing, and we go with nothing. And all this body is made up of material elements, which is the energy of the Lord, and the soul also is meant to be united with love and love and devotion. So when he said this, then his father became completely irate. He became so angry that he threw the boy off his lap, and immediately he went to the teachers, to cut off their throats. 
He said, what is this that you're teaching this boy? How can you teach him all, all this? And they said, no, this is not coming from us. They said, how could he not? He's only five years old. Where could he learn all of this? It must be coming from you. They said, no. Believe us, it's not coming from us. And furthermore, we have the priestly caste. So, it behooves you to speak to us like this. You should know how you deal with us. Otherwise, you're making an offense. So, so then Hiranyakashipu, he let that go, and then he sent Pallad back to the school, and then the teachers, they called Pallad, and they asked him, they said, Oh Pallad, where are you learning all of this from? And Pallad, he explained to them, that actually, all of this is coming just from the heart spontaneously. I do not know where it comes, but just spontaneously, it just flows from the heart, and it's coming out. And then the teachers, they, um, they did not really believe, but Pallad, he was concealing the fact that previously, while he was in the womb of his mother, that he had heard the spiritual instruction from a great sage, Narada Muni. I've explained this before. So, because he had such a high-class spiritual master, a spiritual preceptor, then, even though he was only five years old, he was already a self-realized soul. And no matter what situation he was put in, he was undeterred. He had very strong faith in, in the goal of life, which was to achieve love of God. So then, the teachers, they took him back into school, and they started to teach. Prahlad was with other schoolmates, and he, he seemed to be learning his work and doing quite well. So then his teachers sent in a marker, they had to go somewhere for some errand. And they thought, well, Prahlad seems to be doing quite well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sit. Can you tell? When Hiranyakaspu asked Prahlad Maharaj, if your teachers are not giving okay. education like this, from where you received all the teachings? Hmm? Then what he told? Naishan? You remember the slopes? Huh, you should do. And you should try to. So, Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak of this conversation uh, between Hirani Kashipu and Prahlad Maharaj. Hirani Kashipu, who is very eager to know... When he heard from the teachers that he has, they have not uh, taught him all these things, then he was so angry and he told to Prahlad, Where you have learned all, learn these, all these things? Prahlad's Nonsense and all these things? Then Prahlad Maharaj, he replied to his father, Makena Krishna Parato Satoba Mito Bipade Tagrihabatana Adam Tagobi Vishatam Tamisham Puna Puna Chavita Chavana. He said, Oh, actually, those materialistic persons their inclination towards the service of Krishna can never be aroused by their own efforts, by the efforts of others, or by a combination of the both. <coughs> they have the griha bratanam. They have a vow to be in the bodily concept of life. I am this body, this is me, my family, my house, and all of these things. And they are making progress very rapidly by all of their material activities where they're going very quickly in the direction of hell, the darkest region of all existence. How, and what are they doing along the way? Puna, Puna, Chavana, oh, Chavana. Don't slip. They are straight, very straight. Don't take the help of wall. You should come at least like this from wall. Don't take help. They're going in the direction of the darkest. You are not old. You should come. <laughs> Don't take help. If I'm old and then not taking help, you see. They don't sleep. 
They're going in the direction of the darkest region of existence by chewing that which is already being chewed. Uh, in other words, in many, many lifetimes, uh, all living entities, they have tried to take some pleasure out of the activities of eating, sleeping, sex and fighting with one another. But they were never satisfied by these things. Yet again and again, birth after birth, they try to chew that which has already been chewed. Mm? Just like if you take sugar cane and you chew it, mm? then you throw it down. If someone comes and picks up that sugar cane and chews it, no juice will come out. So this is, you can chew and chew and chew, but there's no taste. So this is the nature of the material world. Chewing and chewing and chewing, trying to enjoy again and again, but no taste, no satisfaction for the soul anywhere. So he said, they are madly engaged in chewing something which has already been chewed. There's no satisfaction for these people. And their inclination towards Krishna, it is never aroused. It cannot be, they may try to arouse it, others may try to help them, and a combination of both. But their inclination will never be aroused. Then he said, Nate vidu swatagatim hi vishnum turashayaye bahir atamanina Yandaya tanda upaniya manas te pisha tantram urubdam nibadha. He said, Na te vidusu arta gatim hi vishnam. They don't know their own self interest. They think this thing is, will be good for me and this thing will be good for me. But what is the real self interest of the individual? The real self interest is the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na te vidu, they don't know. So arta gatim hi vishnam. Their own self-interest and the goal of their life is the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu. Durasha yebahi artamanina. They have so many material desires. And they think, yebahi artamanina, that all these external things of this world, that there's some value in them. And therefore what happens? Andayatandarupaniyamanas. They choose any person who is very expert in manipulating this material world and accept him as, the, as their guru and accepting initiation from him, they follow him. But that person they are following is blind. They are blind and they are following another blind person. So what is the result when a blind first person follows the words and instructions of another blind person? Hmm? Then all of them together they fall in a ditch. Hmm? So in the same way, in the world today, there are so many people giving different types of education and advice. But they don't know who they are. They don't know who is God. They don't know what is the goal of life. They are completely blind. And the common man are following... The common man is so blind, and he's following the educated uh, uh, intellectuals, the intelligentsia of society, who are equally blind. And together, they're all going to, very quickly, to destruction. Mm -hmm. Why? Because all of their activities just bind them more and more. Tantram Urudamni Badha. All of their ac activities in this world, they cause karmic reactions, which cause them to be bound and stay in the cycle of birth and death again and again. Many problems come to them, and they invent some technique to become free from the problem. But their remedy for the problem is more dangerous than the problem itself. And in this way, they become more and more entangled in material existence and go down. Mm -hmm. So then, how is it possible that such persons can ever be changed? How will their inclination towards Krishna be aroused? So then Pallad Maharaj, he answered that question. That the jivas, they have so many anarts, with, that means unwanted qualities within their heart. Mm -hmm. How will they ever be changed? Their chitta vritti, the function, the tendency of their consciousness is always flowing in the direction of the material energy. <coughs> but, sprishyatana all their anarts will, be dis will disappear and their tendency towards, they will be turned round and their consciousness will flow in the direction of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. How? Just by Mahishan's Padra Jogi Shekan, Miskinchananam Navinitya Yavat. If they can 
smear their entire bodies with the dust of the lotus feet of a Niskinchen Vaishnav. That means a pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has no possession. He never thinks, this is mine. He never even thinks, I am mine. But he thinks everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. I belong to the Supreme Lord. Hmm? He has no uh, possessions. And he's fully in love with the Lord. By smearing one's entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of such a Vaishnav, then the tendency of any conditioned soul is completely turned around. Hmm? Otherwise, it is quite impossible. Hmm? So what does it mean to smear the entire body with the dust of the feet of a Vaishnav? The dust of the feet of the pure devotee means his mood. Mm? To become thoroughly immersed in the mood of the pure devotee. And then one's life can be successful. <coughs> Very good. Prabhu will come and he will tell you. Hearing this, Hiranyakaswa become furious. And what he did? Yes, sir. Tell in a very strong way, <laughs> not in sleeping. <laughs> inspire him, inspire all. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what will become of me. <laughs> Have you some sweet or anything? Oh. <laughs> you can help. Okay, go on. <laughs> so after this, Hiranyu Kasipu, he became more furious. Mm. You know? He became so furious that he wanted to kill his own son. Yeah. This is the nature of a person who is influenced by the tendency to enjoy this world. Uh, anyone who thinks, I am Lord and Master of all I survey, I am the enjoyer, I am the possessor, he thinks he can kill and murder and do anything for his own sense gratification. <coughs> Although Hiranya Kasipu, he had <coughs> so many blessings that no one could kill him. Nowhere, even in any month or any day, any year, in the night, the day, inside the house, outside the house could he be killed. But what was his problem? Prahlad Maras very clearly pointed that out. This problem was that, my dear father, although you have so many qualifications, you cannot control your mind, <laughs> your senses. Yeah, you are master of this world but you cannot control your own mind. And this is the big problem with anyone who thinks that he can be happy in this world without God consciousness. Yeah. He thinks that <coughs> I will enjoy this world without thinking that I have any relationship with God. He will be the slave of his own mind, his own senses. And this was the position of Hirani Kasipu, although he was the <coughs> biggest and most successful controller of this world, he was not able to recognize his own relationship with God. So what happened? He told his guards, come on! And they were coming very quickly because they were so much fearing the orders of their master. And he said, take this boy and kill him at once! <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, throw him off the cliff in the ocean. And he was thrown. But he was thrown him? off the cliff in the ocean. And what happened? Krishna picked him up. Yeah. Nothing happened with Pulat Maharaj. Again, he came. And Hirani Kasipu, he couldn't believe what happened. He became more furious. And he said, throw him in that boiling oil there. Uh -huh. There was a big pot with boiling oil. And he threw him inside that bo boiling oil. Nothing happened. Yeah. They, they all became ice. Ice. like ice. Yeah. Very so cool. Nice. And so, so nice. So Who nice. did it? To be holy, master. holy Master Lord did it. Yeah. Then, 
then he was given very very powerful poison poison hmm. so he was forced to drink poison prahlad maharaj what happened poison turned into amrit nectar. nectar nothing happened his lord always protected any atrocious activity which his father tried <coughs> to kill his own little son lord always saved him so this elephants is were sent to Magic smash <laughs> but elephants <coughs> elephants were sent yeah big big elephants were Magic. sent but when they touched oh they have a very electrical shock, shock. shock. and they began to <laughs> run away <laughs> His one sister was Holika. 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 How qualified? Go on. Holika. You don't know? I vaguely remember Holika. Ah, sir. So you should. But thank you. was the king of holika so hiranyakashipu try at his level best to kill him sing him so odi his dear sister came and asked oh my dear brother why you so odi i can kill him in a moment you forget that i benedicted by lord brahma that if i sit or if i enter in burn in fire fire could not touch me so i shall take my nephew in my lap and i said in time burning in fire that's a big flame and you will turn to ashes and i will come back again but your child will and your child will be burnt burn into ashes he was away you became so happy oh i forget as before yes sister i shall give you a very good reward good presentation then hiranyaka shubhu arrange the order is servants to arrange big fire big flame suppose is going to touch to sky holika came and called his nephew oh my dear nephew please come i shall play with here with you here taking him she entered into fire after a couple of minutes she turned into ashes and prahlad maharaj came out from the fire smiling face who protect him yes god is every higher he is protecting parlad every higher when has taken shelter who has taken shelter in the lord's feet or who has surrendered unconditionally in the lotus feet of lord oh he is bound to save so lord is always saving him saving him so the hinmakashi put order his servant throw him from that mountain then in the down there is so many rocks he will be smashed completely they did so but nothing happened every higher krishna is protecting him because he's completely surrendered himself in the lotus feet of god then he is thinking what to do then is the preceptor of prahlad maharaj sandana was for the told don't worry we shall teach him then he will be very good boy my father is not here my father yes. is not here when my father will come he will teach him as a manner your boy will be very obedient to you don't worry <coughs> then sandava murga took pralla taking pralla went to their hermitage once they went for some household work they, they began to teach but one day they were they Bent. teaching pallad sham dam dand sham dan dand ve that means diplomacy duplicity hypocrisy all these things like a king how to behave other kings and other country they are thinking a pallad maharaj became silent not reply anything they are thinking that pallad became so learned learned person about this all all these things so one day they went for household work 
the appoint Prahlad Maharaj as a monitor. Oh Prahlad, please take care of your friends. They will not make any disturbance. They will not make any noise. I am coming. I am coming yes, soon. very soon. So they went away. Then all boys became so happy. Oh Prahlad, today our teacher is not here. We can play. Prahlad Maharaj replied, don't worry. Please listen to me. We will play afterward. We can we can play afterward. Please listen to me at first. What? Then Prahlad Maharaj give him some instruction. Please follow me. Then you will be happy for your whole life, forever. The boy is replying, Aj karo so kal karo, kal okay. karo so parso, kyo khat khat me pade huye ho, sumay pada hai barso. What you want to do bhajan, you can do oh tomorrow. Mother. If you want to do tomorrow, you can do day after tomorrow, because we shall lie for a long time. Prahlad Maharaj told, don't think so. Who will die where none can say? Any, at any moment, at any time, anybody can give his body. So don't worry, please listen to me. So please start bhajan from beginning, from boyhood, from childhood. Prolongma is teaching them Kumare Acharit Targo Dharman Bhagavataniha Dulavam Manusam Jan Matadap Padruva Marthadam. Please start from childhood. Otherwise, you will never be ex an expert. He told that Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. We are part and parcel. If we want to be happy, we should chant, remember, and glorify that Lord from very boyhood. Then the children told him, the boys told, that now you are so much baby and we will play, we will study, and gradually we will be expert anything, and when we will be old, then we we shall be uh, wow. like this. So the boys, re boys replied, when we will be grow up and we will be expert and old, then we shall do bhajan. Prabhupada told, no my dear friend, it is not possible. When you will be when old, will be old, then you cannot see, you cannot see it straight. straight. <coughs> Your backbone will not be straight. So how you can meditate bhakti yoga? It is not possible. Then Prahlad Maharaj give one Prahlad Maharaj has given one chart of the lifetime. No, no, he told also. It is not sure that you will be old. You can die in before old, in young age. In young age, not where very in childhood you can you can die in young age also. So no certainty that all will be young. So if you are dead in boyhood, then how you will be? How you will concentrate and chant and remember Lord? So very vaguely you should do. Then Prahlad Maharaj told, what? Na chemam mukunda charanam bhujam. Tat prayasu param. Don't do some efforts by which your lifetime will be spoiled. No, no. You should not be worried for your maintenance. It may be that you are not endeavoring to maintain your life, making money, you are not making money, you are not doing anything, but still everything is coming automatically by your past activities. Like a man can take birth in the house of prime minister. He is wealthy itself, he himself, because he has come in the family of a very big, rich person. 
automatically. Everything, life, maintaining is going on. And if a man has come in a very poor family, why he came? By his old activities. So up to death, we are bound, bound to test all the activities which we have done. Their impressions will come. And automatically our maintenance of life will be continue. continue. So don't worry for this. You know that elephants had so much weak stomach. 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 Eh? They don't serve anyone, but uh, automatically it is. And python, they also never do any job. Eh? And birds, they have no business. And any person doing so many um, activities. Eh? All day long. But he cannot maintain his own stomach. A man who becomes like mad, leprosy, so many diseases that he cannot walk. He wants to do, but he cannot do. Why? So don't be worried for your maintenance. Oh, it will automatically become. You should try to realize who are you, from where you have come, who is maintain, maintaining you, who is looking after you, who is controlling the whole world. You should try to know from beginning. And then he gave a chart for the whole life. If we have a age of hundred years, what life? So you, you have, we have the lifetime of hundred years. So among these hundred years, we work in daytime and sleep at night. So among hundred years, so we spend our half lifetime, that means fifty years by sleeping only. After that, when you will be from eighty to hundred, if, if you, you have not controlled your senses when taking wine so much and bad activities, more time you will lose. Not only half, more than half it will be gone. Yeah. You have drank so much and for hours and hours you are sleeping in drains and dogs are washing your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it may be. One shower. <laughs> so, so, those who have not controlled their senses, so time will go pass uselessly. But if half waking and half sleeping, then fifty years will pass uselessly. And then when you become too old, between eighty to hundred. And from first beginning. First beginning? Twenty years. Twenty years to be an expert, to read and write and expert. If you want to be an expert in this world, at least twenty years is needed. So fifty plus twenty. And then twenty 70, more. And thirty years left there. So among the thirty, last eighty to hundred, you could not work, you could not meditate, you could not digest. So if you think some, something, next moment you forget. So how you can do bhajan? So it is not possible. Only remaining? Only remaining ten years. In ten years? In ten years you have so many desire, uncountable desire. We I want car, this. we want airplane. I want, want this, I want to be very... very and also concerned. to marriage, yes. to maintain and family. Maintain family and nourish our children. So many desires. So, so time is like zero. So nothing is left there. So we are told that if you take too much alcohol, then dog will come and wash your face. <laughs> and then in Kalavandi community park, in Kalavandi community park, people are coming with so many one, two, three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and what chicken? So. You should try to begin your sadhana bhajan 
रिमेम्बर एंड चांटिंग फ्रॉम वेरी बिगिनिंग बिगिनिंग देन दे बॉयज आस्ट फ्रॉम हायर यू है लर्न ऑल दिस थिंग हु टोल्ड यू हु टोल्ड यू देन प्रहलाद महाराज रिप्लाइड वेन आई वॉज इन माई मादर रूम माई स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर नारदीसी टॉट मी एवरी थिंग हे टोल्ड टू माई मदर But my but mother, mother forget. forget everything. But I remember all these things by His causeless mercy. So, so how from. to do bhajan? How to meditate? How to do bhakti yoga? Pralad my replying. Pralad my replied them. Guru sushru saya bhakta sarvala bhar pani na cha sange na sadhu bhakta nam israra dhani na cha. You have to be always in good association. And being good association, you will surrender yourself in the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. Just like in our school, our teacher is, te- is teaching us. Similarly, if you want to advance in spiritual life, in Krishna consciousness, you have to surrender yourself in the lotus feet of a bona fide guru dev, bona fide spiritual master. Then you can do bhajan. So, according to advice of Pallad Maharaj. All his demonic friends, they start chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hearing this chanting, Sandamarka came and they think what to do. Now there is a dilemma. As before only Prahlad was there, now all boys are chanting and remembering Bhagavan, God. What to do? Then they inform to Hiranyakashipu that your boy polluted all boys. Hiranyakashipu told, "As Pallad, O Pallad, you are always chanting and remembering, meditating 